Greetings folks, this is the ZOHD Talon GT Rebel. This was sent to me by Sonic Model for the review. I have to say I'm a big fan of Sonic Model. See behind me I have three of their models still in my hangar. This is the Nano Talon, the first probably of the really unique designs. Uh, there's the Dart XL, still going strong, mid-speed cruising FPV camera carrying platform that I have. Really, really nice and really unique design. And probably my favorite wing and favorite of a lot of my friends as well, the uh, Sonic Model AR wing, just a really, really nice wing. Better than the S800 in my opinion, cruising FPV wing. Now the Talon GT is going to be a bit of a, a mashup between these two models. The radical sort of design uh, philosophy and looks of the Dart XL in the plan form of a Mini Talon, I guess. I have owned and reviewed a Mini Talon, and it was okay, has a very big following, uh, just didn't thrill me for some reason, it didn't really fit into my stable of planes. But this one will be very interesting. Now, ZOHD models are not cheap, they're not for everyone, and they're not cheap in the sense of price, and definitely quality too. They are definitely superior quality. A lot more design work has gone into these planes than most other models on the market. Let's have a look at it. You can see from the packaging it is almost Apple computer style packaging. Really nice moulded foam packaging and that I'm going to hang on to this. This is useful for other projects. Quick assembly pamphlet apparently uh, assembly is super super easy and there you can see it's packaged beautifully in here as well another molded section there tail fins V tail is that I don't know what that is might be a stand for it or something like that wings more padding lots and lots of stickers uh, we've got some battery straps here or camera straps we'll find out what they're for a bit later on more stickers there, wing spar, what are they for? Oh, down facing finlets I think, we shall see, pull that out and that's all there is, alright. So you could, because it's so easy to disassemble and put together, you could keep this as a transport uh, box. Alright, let's have a look at the fuselage. Really, it feels really, really nice and stiff and solid. Uh, and I notice after the feedback from the Dart XL, there's more reinforcing, reinforcing rods down the side there because the, the Dart XL nose uh, was a little bit weak and did tend to break off if you landed a bit awkwardly. More stickers, nuts and bolts. Uh, there's the prop. So one of the good things about uh, Sonic Model and ZOHD is that they are aware of community feedback and they do make changes. Space in there for GoPro and we get uh, different camera mounting inserts as well. That's for a Mobius style or run cam. A cube camera like a run cam 3. A little bit of packing in there. For my flying fields that's going to scoop up too much dirt I think so. I, I think I would cover that over maybe. We'll see how it comes together anyway, but that's one of the concerns that I have. I usually tend to put my cameras up on the top on the nose there. ZOHD Mark II Series 2216-1300 KV, looks very much like a sunny sky. Maybe it's sourced from them. ZOHD 40 amp ESC, and you can see we have electrical, six pin electrical connectors on all these spots here too, so um, no wiring up to do as far as I can see. Ply reinforcing down there, solid bit of ply, solid motor mount down the back too. And I've got an exit hole for uh, ventilation there, nice touch. Some uh, sticky back Velcro. Alright, here's the V-tail section. Electrical contacts there, already wired up to the little servos, Metal Gear servos. Lovely. Uh, I've got lovely little Clevis bands on there too. See, this is all good attention to detail. So, let's try and get this. A bit of jiggling to get it seated so that the electrical contacts plug in and the retaining nut goes through. Just give it a twist and that is mounted. 
got a little patch here that says GPS. There's no GPS in there. I think that's just the spot where you would mount a GPS. Oh, it's just a little cover. There you go. Okay, here are the wings. MK2 series Metal Gear servos, ball links for nice, tight uh, and slop-free operation. A spot for a receiver or video transmitter out in the wing there. A little hole where you can put your antenna through. This turn down tip, I guess it's to improve efficiency. If you have little winglets on the end, it, it makes the wing act like a, a larger wing by sort of stopping the vortexes coming around the edge. I would have thought turned up tips would give it more stability, but uh, we'll just have to see how it flies. Wing spar first. So the wing spar goes through there, through the front, sorry. Kind of stiff. And there's a little thumb screw there. Oh, there we go, that seats it nicely. Just screw it up. We also have this sort of plastic uh, leading edge protector, which is very nice. Would have been nice if it went all the way out to the end, but it's better than nothing. Tightening up the thumb screw. You see we've got a, a spot here for a flight control board, which would be right in the middle of the plane, which is good, and the spaces for the standoffs to come through. All the wiring here. And now, ah, oh, we get two of these, so we sort of get a replacement one as well. That's, that's kind of <laughs> interesting. So they would just screw in there. What's that for? It's like a protective stand for it, I would say. Oh yeah, there you go. It's for working on your plane. That's a nice little touch too. Very good. Let's put the prop on. These are the camera mounts provided. Uh, this one is just for a standard GoPro style. This one is for Runcam or Mobius. This one is for Runcam 3S. And this one is for the Hero Session with the little curved corner in there. So I'm using an X6R receiver, FR Sky receiver, ailerons channel 1 on uh, wire lead. This one is a spare electrical connection going out to the end of the wing, same on the other side. And we've got the two tails going into uh, 4 and 5, ESC need an extension for that, going into 3. When I put a flight control board I use S-Bus uh, and I'll have this out in the wing. I'm going to use a, a current sensor just so I can keep a check on consumption and uh, current draw. Here's my programming on the Tyrannus. Uh, to get the recommended throws, ailerons 10 millimeters up and down, I had to do 50% ailerons. And the elevator and rudder throws, uh, 8 millimeters both, uh, also 50%. This is not using a flight control board, so this is proper. Uh, V-tail mixing or elevon mixing on the tail. If you were using a flight control board you would just have 100% ailerons on one, 100% elevator on two, 100% throttle on three, 100% rudder on four. None of this mixing. The receiver is just going to sit down there for the moment. I'm going to have my antennas coming up here. Nicely sort of gently held there, that's very good. So let's just see how the motor runs up. See we have some CG marks there. So 
So that's a bit tail heavy at the moment. The battery's going to go, have to go right forward, I can tell, and probably have a, a, a camera in the nose. How's that's going? Yeah, so we're definitely going to have to have a camera there. Oh, there we go. So with a 3004S right forward and a Mobius in the nose, it's going to balance okay. So I'll check the current draw now. So that got up to 25 amps for flat out. And the weight, flying weight with a 3004S and a Mobius on it, which is what I'll need, is one kilo and 50 grams, 1050 grams. That's pretty good.